A little less than a year ago, I decided to review the then-new Kendrick Lamar album, Damn. I just kind of felt like making the video, I had a few things to say about the album, and I got pretty good feedback on that video, a few people that watched it really enjoyed it. Since then, I haven't done any other music reviews at all, just because I didn't feel like it. But when something as interesting and bizarre as this comes around, I feel like I just have to comment on it. So before I can even address the music itself, I just have to talk about the circus that has been Takashi 6 ix life in the past few months, and why I took any interest in it in the first place. My first impressions of this guy had nothing to do with his music, and everything to do with his antics and outrageous appearance. I kept seeing this guy's face everywhere on my Twitter feed, and I'm sure that you have too. He's got 6 9 tattooed all over him for some reason, he has a spinning chain with 6 9 on it, and he even has rainbow-colored, heat-sensitive, glow-in-the-dark hair. But it wasn't until the release of his Kiki video in January that I actually heard his music. I had assumed that this guy was some sort of meme rapper that would be relevant for a month or two and would never be talked about again. Generally, I don't engage with music like that, I don't enjoy stuff like that, so when I went to listen to this Kiki song and found myself actually enjoying it, I was really surprised. After that, I checked out his other singles like Gummo and began to take an interest in his antics and his bizarre relationship with DJ Academics. If you don't sell it, can I keep this? Yeah. If you don't sell hundred thousand, I can keep this. I put a chain on my shooter. Bro, I don't shoot shit. shit. I ain't gonna lie. I don't shoot shit except the pull up dude. But can I keep this? Yeah, pull up. Could I keep this shit? As you may have heard, this guy does have some sexual misconduct charges against him, and those charges led to the beef that caused the very public falling out between him and Trippy Red, another hot, up-and-coming rapper. Then there's this thing with his GED, where if he doesn't pass the test the next time he takes it, he's facing potential jail time. All while this is going on, this dude is consistently trolling online every day and giving out choice quotes like, My music is garbage, but it's hot garbage. And then, just days before this project dropped, we get this absolutely hilarious check-in saga. So Takashi made a trip out to LA for NBA All-Star Weekend to play a few concerts. And apparently, when you're claiming some sort of gang affiliation like 6 9 is, when you go to another place like LA, you're supposed to check in, check in with the local gangsters and basically say, hey, this is your turf, I respect that this is your turf, and I hope that you keep me safe and treat me with respect as I would do for you if you were on my turf. Now, I've never heard of this concept in my entire life. It's very fascinating to me. It's also kind of funny because it's like, how do you check in? I asked this question. Nobody had an answer for exactly what the method of checking in is. But whatever the circumstances may be, Takashi69, not only did he not check in, but he made a public Instagram video talking about how he would not check in, how he will never check in. He doesn't do that. So this resulted in a three-day manhunt for this 6 9 kid. I don't know how many people were actually looking for him, but they were looking for him, and there's even a video of some dudes that went up into a hotel and started making a ruckus up in there, but no one was able to find him. And then on his last day in LA, as he's leaving and going to LAX, he gets jumped at the airport by two guys, but he actually outnumbered them. I believe he had like four dudes with him. Outlets like TMZ reported this as being like a huge brawl that broke out. Really, it was more like a little bit of a scuffle. And then the next day, he's going to San Antonio, Texas, and another group puts out a video saying, Takashi's not welcome here, we're gonna hunt him down. These guys also tried to intercept Takashi at the airport, but I guess the police caught wind of this, and I believe that it did result in like an arrest or two, which is kind of funny. I personally think that 6 9 knows exactly what he's doing and that this was some very clever promotion, very clever but dangerous promotion for his new project, but even if it wasn't, it had that effect anyway. So finally, we get to that project itself, Day 6 9 How is it? Well, just looking at the track list, things aren't off to a great start. This album, mixtape, project, whatever else you want to call it, is incredibly short at only 27 minutes. Now, when it comes to music like this, short projects are not always a bad thing. In fact, length can be a horrible thing for mainstream, hyped-up rap music. Just look at Culture 2. I'd much rather have a few bangers than 90 minutes of bland filler content that just all blends together. 
But the problem with Day 6-9 is that on this already short track listing, we've heard three of the 11 songs, and then another one is just a remix of one of those. So before I dig into the individual songs, I'm just going to rapid fire off a few general things that hold constant throughout this album. As a listening experience, this is just a collection of songs, there's no cohesion, no transitions, one song ends with the scum gang watermark, and the next song starts with it. All of the songs are about killing people, brandishing weapons, there's dicks getting sucked, there's bitches, there's hoes. We expect this, we know this. But at the very least, I can't really remember any super cringy, terrible lines on this album, but a lot of that is probably due to his very aggressive vocal style kind of obscuring the lyrics, so you, even if there was a bad line there, you probably wouldn't make it out anyway. And finally, Takashi 6 9 is screaming. The whole album, no exceptions. So let's cover the three singles first. Gummo, Kuda, and Kiki, which account for three of the four songs I genuinely enjoyed on the mixtape. Gummo was his big breakout hit single, has like 130 million plays on YouTube on the music video. It's a good song, it's, it's menacing, it's aggressive, it's mean. The beat is very simple, but it, it feels thick and layered enough, and I enjoy the song. Kuda is very similar in its tone to Gummo, but I think it just comes off as being a little bit worse than Gummo. And then Kiki with Fetty Wap and A Boogie with the Hoodie. I really like this song. This is definitely my favorite song out of 6 9 And I was really surprised by it too because A Boogie and Fetty Wap, I'm not really a fan of either of those guys at all. And yet here I am really enjoying them on 6 9s song. And this song stands in stark contrast to Gummo and Kuda because it's very colorful, very eccentric. The beat is all over the place, it's wild, it's exciting, and the arpeggio in the background sounds like it came out of an old Zelda game. And then I guess I can lump the remix of Gummo in here as well. Now on the remix, he got none other than Offset of the Migos, which is, that's a crazy feature to get. But in reality, Offset on Gummo is the musical equivalent of superimposing an actor onto a film after it's been completed. It straight up sounds like a fan-made YouTube mashup. And then the audio quality is really, really bad on Offset's performance. It literally sounds like he phoned it in. So that's three of the four songs I liked, and then a remix of one of those songs that I didn't like at all. The only new song on Day 6-9 that I enjoyed a lot was Billy, the intro song. It's the perfect opener, and 6 9 sounds as loud and aggressive and energetic as ever. The bass line is going crazy in the background, and the instrumental cuts out, and you can just hear him screaming his head off. This would probably be my favorite song on the album if it weren't so short, and it sounds like kind of an unfinished idea. Then there's the song with Young Thug, which is just such a letdown. This was potentially an exciting pairing, two guys that can be super energetic with their performances coming together. However, Young Thug, he can kind of be like a mixed bag. One song he sounds generic as hell, and the next he's pushing boundaries. On this song, Young Thug comes in with one of his more boring performances, which is a real shame. And then the song overall, it just feels a little bit too light, and Takashi, yeah, he's screaming and stuff like that, but the second Young Thug comes on, he sounds like he's, he sounds like he's, like, dizzy before he recorded the song or something. So now all the rest of the songs that we have left on the album, they all share a lot in common, they all kind of blend together. So in here we've got 93, Dewey, Bubba, Mookie, and Chocolate. I did not enjoy any of these songs, like Mookie, just really lazy sounding beat, 6 9 just screaming over it, and at this point in the album, you're kind of desensitized to it, so since there's no flavor, it doesn't really hit hard. And then Dewey, this song can be summed up, yeah, 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 pause. That's what the song sounds like. It's one of those kind of ski mask, the slump god, or like XXX Tentacion, those hyped out shouting songs on their SoundCloud accounts. And this, again, just really a shame to me, because before hearing songs like this on this album, I liked Takashi 6 9s delivery because he was shouting and being abrasive without sounding like this type of song to me, but, you know, I guess now he's gonna make that. These types of songs are so blown out that it's like the rage isn't even there, if that makes any sense. It's kind of like making a horror movie where you've got so much blood splattered everywhere that you can't even see the horrendous things that are supposed to be going on. And then there's the final song, Chocolate. It's kind of trying to be atmospheric a little bit, but really it's just a big, sludgy mess. And that's how I would describe most of these new songs on here. They're just 
messy. They're poorly put together. The audio quality is, like, kind of bad, which this stands in stark contrast to his singles. I liked the singles like Kiki and Gummo because of their tightness, their preciseness. Despite 6 9 screaming and being incomprehensible sometimes, I can still clearly hear everything that's going on, and that's not something that can be said for these other new songs. And I listened to this album like four or five times, and every time I would get to these songs, these new ones, like Dewey and 9-3, and it just, oh god, it's like I didn't want to listen to them, I wanted to press the skip button. And then you look at the songs, they're all like two minutes long, so it's really an achievement that it feels so boring and slow. Like, if you want to see 27 minutes go by very slowly, sit yourself down in front of a stereo and do nothing else but listen to this mixtape. And I understand what 6 9 was thinking with this project. He's like, I've got these three singles, they've got hundreds of millions of hits on YouTube, I need to get a project out there and capitalize on this as soon as possible. But I think he's made a mistake releasing a project this scattered, this boring. It kind of reminds me of what designer did when he put out his first project and it was just a complete dud a mess it was a lot like this a lot of unfinished ideas short songs dragged on and on and i just think it's the wrong move to make like yes everyone is talking about 6 9 he's incredibly popular he's maybe at his peak right now and everyone's looking at him but putting out a half-assed project like this with half-assed songs on it wrong move in my opinion i think he would have been better off just focusing his efforts and making maybe two new songs or three new songs and putting out an EP or maybe just another really good single. In this internet streaming age, it's not absolutely necessary for everyone to be an album artist. Maybe Takashi69 is not an album artist and that's perfectly okay. So I'm really not feeling Day69. It's probably a 5 out of 10 mixtape to me and if it didn't have those three singles on it, Kuda, Kiki, and Gummo, I could easily see the score being much lower, maybe like a 3 out of 10. I really hope that next time 6 9 puts out another project, or maybe just a single, he takes a step back, does it a little bit more slowly, a little bit more carefully, and realizes what his limitations as an artist are. Because this is a guy that has one type of vocal delivery, he has like two or three different flows on this album, so there's only so much he can do, and maybe that's not enough to carry a full album. Maybe you need to get some more features in there, like the Kiki song. Alright, so if you guys checked out this mixtape, album, project, whatever the fuck we call these things now, let me know what you thought of it down below, and until next time, thanks for watching.